Good evening and welcome to the Carnival of the Planets. Have you ever thought of how planets sound? What is the music of the planets? Of course, there is no such thing as a sound, let alone music, coming directly out of celestial bodies. Sound needs a medium to propagate, but space is a near vacuum. Throughout history, composers have been greatly inspired by the beauty and mysticism of the planets of the solar system. Most notably, Gustav Holst, who composed his famous suite for orchestra, The Planets. But what if we listened to the planets through science, linking physics and astronomy with music? Well, that is what Johannes Kepler, astrophysicist from the 17th century, did by devising one musical scale for each planet of the solar system. We call them the Kepler scales. These scales for centuries were forgotten until Laurent Ayer, an astrophysicist at the Geneva Observatory of our present age, rediscovered them. He had the brilliant idea that someone should compose pieces of music based on them. I was lucky enough to meet him, and needless to say, I jumped at the opportunity. Two years later, we composed the Carnival of the Planets, a cycle of seven pieces for solo piano, of which I will interpret Venus, my composition on the guitar. But how were these scales created in the first place? Well, Johannes Kepler's legacy in the field of physics was immense. His famous laws are still taught in high schools and universities all over the world. The first law states that any celestial body rotating around the sun will follow an elliptical curve. The second law describes the rotational speed of that orbit. Finally, the third law states that planets orbiting closer to the sun will move faster, whereas planets orbiting further away from the sun will move slower overall. But Kepler also had a passion for the arts and was sort of an eccentric, longing to find the beauty of mathematics as ratios expressed in nature. So naturally, the creation of such scales was a normal endeavor to him. But what was his process? Well, the key was to link the vibrational frequency of musical notes, like when you hit a piano or a guitar string, to the frequency of rotation of planets around the sun. Kepler started by giving each planet a bass note, a fundamental pitch related to its speed. Kepler gave the slower planets, like Jupiter, a lower note, and he gave the faster planets, like Mercury, a higher note. But to create an actual scale, Kepler needed not only one, but a full range of notes. In order to do that, Kepler used eccentricity. Eccentricity refers to how elliptical an orbit is, as opposed to circular. Kepler gave the more eccentric orbits a wider range of notes. Finally, to fill in the notes inside the scale, Kepler used either the natural major or minor modes commonly used in Western music. So basically, Kepler was able to create an abstract yet meaningful relationship between planets' orbits and sound frequencies. By listening to each scale's musical qualities and shape, you can actually deduce astronomical properties of the planets of the solar system. Let us now listen to two musical examples. First, the scale of Mercury. Mercury's scale consists of many notes placed in the high register because Mercury's orbit is very eccentric. On the other hand, Venus's scale goes like this. It consists of only one note repeated three times because Venus's orbit is very circular. But now, how could I compose music based on these seemingly so dull and simple scales? What was my inspiration? Well, motives such as these scales have been a composer's obsession for centuries. The most famous example is probably Ludwig van Beethoven with his famous fate motive that opens his fifth symphony. <laughs> Thank you.
This motive is at the heart of the symphony, is found everywhere throughout the movement, and is the building block for the whole work. So just like Beethoven did with his work, I tried to use the Kepler scales as foundational blocks for the motivic development of my own pieces. Next, I will play my composition Venus for you. Uh, Venus was originally written for the piano, but today I will play a transcription I made for the guitar for you. As you might recall, Venus' scale consists of one note repeated three times. I want you to pay close attention and try to spot how it's used in the composition and how it helps highlight its different moods. Venus, in the Greek and Roman mythologies, is also the goddess of love. So I found it would be only fitting to compose a lovely waltz on the theme of love. So without further ado, I will leave you with the music and have a great listen. Thank you very much. <laughs> 